realize, okay, I'm on the wrong number. Okay, so um, um, I'll let you know when, we, when we're live. Looks like we are, yeah. Yeah, so here we are, we're live. Let me, sorry. All right, so hey, uh, Facebook world, I'm here I am live with uh, Brian Joyce over at Joyce Reed Capital. Uh, not only is he an investor in the market, he does have one of the largest um, wholesale real estate companies uh, in our market. And he also uh, does do wholesaling and purchasing nationwide. And I know that um, myself being a wholesaler and investor and, and coming from the Encore team, I still have my cup. Uh, uh, they're very interested in a lot that you may have to say as well. So um, glad to have you on. Obviously, some of the things that um, people want to know is that are the investors still buying? How are the sellers doing? Um, you know, different, what's capital look like and, and things like that. I mean, you, you got it all. So I'll just let you take the floor and, um, and we'll go from there, man. Thanks for coming on. Sure, sure. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Really appreciate uh, the opportunity to be on here. Um, and, you know, by all means, would love to come back and, and really excited to be talking. Um, so, yeah, with Joyce Free Capital, as you mentioned, um, we started buying homes from auctions in 2010, actually was the first one um, thing in, in Florida called tax deed auctions. So in, in Florida, if somebody doesn't pay their taxes for four years straight, the county just goes ahead and sells their house at an auction. Um, that is where me and my old business partner had started in the real estate world was these tax deed auctions. Um, just did one at a time, just fix and flippers to start. I know a lot of people's story usually goes wholesale, then investor. We actually started as investors and then worked into wholesale. Um, but from basically 2010 to 2015, 2016, um, a vast majority of our deals were coming from tax deed auctions and we were not doing a single ounce of wholesaling at that point in time. Um, the auction started to get a lot more competitive kind of on the butt end of that, somewhere between you know 2014 to 2016. Um, and where we used to be able to go to the auction and really handpick any any deal we wanted and then not only us but any other investor at the auction could could grab anything they wanted yeah, I've, I've heard some more stories there yeah for sure <laughs> so when it started it was easy usually you would go there's 10 guys in a room us being one of them and you know we'd, we'd say hey there's there's way more than 10 houses let's call it 50 houses that are going here 50 good investments you get one you get one everybody was getting a tax deed um so it was nice and easy at first but the county's job, of course, is to get as much money as possible out of these. Um, some of the money does go back to the previous owner and then, of course, to cover liens and stuff like that um, from the surplus funds after the, the county's paid back from their taxes, of course. Um, so their job is to get the most money. So one strategy they used, which is, is anybody in Florida knows now, all of these tax deed auctions are now online. Um, so that immediately created a whole new game um, when it came to competition. And so the deals just started to dry up. We didn't have anywhere near the, the flow we used to have. And so one of our solutions was, okay, how can we, you know, of course we had heard about wholesaling. Um, wholesalers were down our neck because we were, you know, we were a buyer, um, an investor. So we were like, you know, we, we didn't really want to pay these wholesale fees. So we started to think about, okay, how can, how can we get direct to these sellers and rather than buying from a direct, uh, from a wholesaler. So that's when we started to, to figure out direct to seller marketing. We started out with mailers. Um, and really just hit the ground running and, and started out doing 100 a week, all handwritten, right? We had a little, little sweatshop going on kind of thing. Um, got all the way up to about 2,000 a week, hand, handwritten, all manual labor. And then at that point, we switched to a, to a mail house. And we have an in-company in mail house now um, where we do all the bulk mailing. And so our post, postage costs and, and paper costs and stuff like that is as low as it possibly can be. Um, and our main focus is direct-to-seller marketing. Um, then we kind of figured out, you know, a little along the way, okay, maybe, you know, maybe we're not the best at flipping. Um, for those of you that don't know, flipping's not that easy. It's not everything you see on HGTV. Um, the, the really hard part about it is one, finding a good deal. Right? So you got to have a good deal. The numbers have to work. What happened? Okay. There we go. We're good. I, we're good. My, my Facebook started screaming at me too, instead of the zoom and, uh, and then I, I was hearing you from like stereo, so. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Go ahead, I'm, I'm um, so sorry about that. All good, all good. Um, where was I? Um, so yeah, so one- there's, So you started going direct to seller. Um, yep, yep. And sorry then, about that. No, all good. And then so we started to try to scale the flipping model. So whereas we started with, you know, one tax deed, then went to two, then to four, then to six. 
Um, we were at a point where we had 25 flips going on at one point in time. Woo! Yeah, yeah. And, you know, kind of what we realized is me and my old business partner, neither of us came from construction background. Um, we, we, you know, we, we know how to do landscaping and, and that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, we can paint your room for you, but um, we're not going to be able to do any other crazy woodwork or anything like that. Um, and so that was one part of it. But another part was just we totally underestimated the management piece of a flip and figured that it was going to be much, much more scalable for us to switch to wholesale. Um, so that was one reason we weren't the best flippers in the game by any means. Um, but one thing is we really like putting the deal together. We like deal making. We like the sales portion of it. Um, and we really like talking to people and, and giving them. I think that's the fun part. It's, it is all, all day. For sure. I mean, I spent 20 years in the car business. So a lot gotcha. of the same transitions you, you saw in real estate, we saw there. So as far as the you used to have to physically go to the auctions and then everything became online. And then the only cars that made it to the auction were the bad ones. <laughs> right, right. Of course, of course. Um, and yeah, so that was a lot of fun. And, and you know, we loved putting the, the deals together, um, speaking with the sellers, working out the numbers, doing the analysis. Um, we just, turns out, we weren't huge fans of the actual construction process. Um, and, you know, flipping sounds all fun and everything. But for us, the, the, the real fun in it was putting that deal together, finding that seller, finding that house, doing the analysis and putting it together. Um, and then, so we kind of realized, okay, maybe we are just trying to be wholesalers and maybe that's a better fit for us. And so starting in 2017, we started that transition. We started to sell most of our assets. We got out of any flips we had as quickly as we could. Um, and then 2019, so last year actually was our first year of 99% wholesale was, was our revenue basically. Um, so that's kind of the transition of the business started as investors. Um, you know, we're tired of buying from wholesalers when we could, when we couldn't get at the auction anymore, went direct to seller, got really, really good and low cost at marketing direct to seller. Um, and then just kind of worked our way into being primary wholesalers. That's awesome, man. And that's, um, <clears throat> that's kind of something that, that makes, I know me talking to a lot of, um, uh, not necessarily investor, but the, the contractor investor, the one that you know, like a David Ferry that, that is out in Sanford that only focuses on Sanford, but he's looking for stuff to build and for himself. That type of investor is someone that they're like, I don't want to buy from a wholesaler. They're taking up the whole margin. So exactly, exactly. because of the daisy chain. So they're looking for somebody to kind of help them and guide them, right? Direct the sellers. And it just seems to make more sense. Yeah. And I mean, part, part of it is, <clears throat> I mean, for us, we were, we were younger, right. When we got started and for us, it was, what are these wholesalers doing that we can't figure out? There's I mean, to, to my mind, it was, I can figure this out. There's, there's no reason that this should be rocket science. I mean, we, I mean, right. I'm a millennial, very comfortable with computers. I very, for some reason was already in, you know, aware of the fact that every County had a website and all this information was on it. Um, so to me, it was just a little trial and error. And I said, okay, we can, we can get direct to seller. No problem. We don't have to buy from, you know, these whole wholesalers at all. We just have to figure out how to get a message to these people. So the first step was kind of analyzing and saying, okay, this isn't rocket science. You know, if these wholesalers are doing it, we can definitely figure it out and then decided to tackle it that way. Um, so now you become, now you become the wholesaler, right? Exactly. But now, now you're not focused only on wholesaling. Now you're, you're just doing the whole, correct? So now at this point, you're just wholesaling to get deals for yourself and your team to, to buy, exactly. right? So as exactly. far as funding and capital backing, this was, this was just cash you guys saved up. You were pooling your money or you had, or you had a bank or a capital Family. backer. So family up first. Um, so yeah, family up first is where we started. Um, the first project we did was a $45,000 house. Um, we bought it for like, you know, 20 something at the auction, did a little bit of work to it, sold it for four. So we didn't really need much money for the first one. But yeah, in the beginning, it all came from family. Um, and then there was a run there where we took some outside money, uh, probably from 2012 to 2014. We did a little experimenting with, with outside people and taking their money on, flipping it for them, that kind of thing wasn't a huge fan of that. And so we went back to family and said, Hey, we want to, you know, we want to really, really grow this thing and build a team. You know, what can we do money wise? And then we put it together that way. Nice. So, so as um, obviously over the last three years, this is what you focused on. And um, what, uh, what do you see going on now with this, the COVID-19 and the shift in the market right now? 
Um, yeah, good question. And I think the I think the the best word you used right there is a shift. Um, you know, I I don't see so far, and obviously we're still kind of early in this thing, but it's not a full turnover um, or full blown like real estate contraction or recession. Um, I think it's a shift. Um, and I I was I'm in a mastermind called Collective Genius, and and a guy by the name of Lee Lee Arnold, he's a huge real estate investor out of Idaho. Um, and he said it very, very well. They, they've raised $170 million in the last like five years or whatnot. Huge business. And, and the way that he put it was investors are more concerned, not, not so much with return on investment, but return of investment. So the buyers are still there. They still want to put that money to work, but their concern no longer is, can I make a 15% return on this flip? It's more, can I get my money out of this in six months? Um, am I, I get, am I going to be able to hold this for long enough if I have to and get my money out of it at some point in the future? So what that kind or at of, at least not lose. Exactly. And not only that, but is this something I can rent? So we're seeing a huge demand actually for lower priced assets that could double as both a rental or a flip. So investors are saying, you know, I want to have that equity and have that opportunity to flip it if I, if I can, but if I can't flip it and the market does absolutely tank on us, you know, can I hold this as a rental and still have a pretty decent rate of return on that as well? Um, more so about protecting the money in the worst case, more so than flipping it in three months and making 15 or 20%. So maybe um, we're seeing a, a, a complete shift to maybe cash flow investing. I think for the time being, yeah. So, right, if you've got, if you've got 2 million bucks lying around, you definitely don't just want to let it sit there. Um, and I know, I know from a few investors I've heard, you know, they're really taking another close look at the stock market because all of a sudden that seems like you can have a pretty good rate of return on that in a short period of time. But um, vast majority of people still know that real estate is safe and, and inherently safer than, you know, the stock market. So do, do you think that with the government right now saying we're not going to do any foreclosures, uh, is that going to make some less, less confident to say, yeah, I got to get out of my house. Are they going to kind of, take advantage of that? And should the investors wait for the government to pull the plug on that? Yeah, so that definitely is a factor for sure. And, and really is gonna depend on the risk appetite of your buyer. So we had a deal where the tenants were supposed to leave, actually just closed yesterday. The tenants were supposed to leave two weeks ago. All this stuff went down, they're like, we're not leaving. And then of course, Orange County here in Florida says you can't evict them either. So my buyer still loves the deal. He's like, but look, this is now a different, this is now a dis different risk level. I can't even kick these people out. You were already giving me a good price enough to evict these people, but now I don't know how long they're actually gonna sit here. So I just did a small price reduction with him. I did a $3,000 price reduction that, hey, this will cover any interest expense you have for, for three to four months. Um, and this should be a fair solution. He agreed, we closed yesterday. Um, so it's, it's definitely a problem solving game right now. Um, the buyers are out there. They still have to put their money to work. For a lot of us, this is how we, this is how we make our living, including these buyers and flippers that you work with. Um, so they still need their money to work. They just, they need to be a little more safe than they did about a month and a half ago. Nice. So um, I know on the other end, you have, um, you have brought on, I don't know if it was a team or, or just one person, but I know that you've been really, really focused on becoming deadly at disposition. I think you figured out the acquisition part of it years ago. And now over the last couple of years, you had mentioned that um, disposition has really become um, your target and you come good at it. And you're also, you know, anybody out there who is wholesaling and has deals, uh, myself, he's got one of mine that he's uh, marketing for me right now, uh, get with him and, and kind of uh, let him help you. Cause I know that that's something that you've been focused on, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, and just to wind back, I mean, just to, just to be blunt with everybody, we were terrible at this. When we, when we decided, Hey, we don't want to be flippers anymore. We, we, we are better fit for wholesalers. We were terrible at this position. Um, but because of the way our business was born and all of our direct to seller marketing, we were amazing at, at getting direct to seller and getting those deals. But to be honest, had, had pretty much no clue how to sell them the right way or the efficient way um, once we started getting them all. So once we kind of realized that, we started spending a lot of time and money and resources in general on figuring out how to be good at disposition. Um, we brought on an, an amazing lady, Jessie Lima. She handles all of our disposition marketing now. 
um, and kind of just tasked her with, hey, we need to be good at this in, in 12, to, 12 to 18 months. Um, and then just day in, day out, kind of trial and error. Of course, we got some education and stuff like that from, from people we know in the business and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's been our primary focus for the last two and a half years straight because we already had the acquisition piece down. Um, and, and with that, now you're getting a lot of deals that you don't even have to go after yourself, right? You, I'm sure you have people out there that are just saying, hey, I, I can do acquisition, but I need help with disposition. Can you be that guy? Absolutely. Yeah. And that, and that's something that, you know, is in the industry, everybody knows it can be a little bit messy. Uh, but since I've been putting my eyes and really focused on it um, and realized actually how, how good we've gotten at disposition, um, there's an easy process behind it. It doesn't have to be messy. Um, and it, it's pretty straightforward as long as you've got a good system and process in place to, to intake these deals and then make sure you're dispoing them at the same quality as your own. Man, that's great. So, um, what I'd love for you to do a few things before we, we go here in the next few minutes, I love, make sure you get back in here and you share this and you also put your information in kind of the comment feed. And if anybody has any questions or how to get a hold of you also, um, do you have some, uh, do you have some deals out there right now that you want to, uh, you want to announce the investors? Do you want to put them in the feed? Um, how can they sign up for your newsletter or newsletter, you know, obviously your, your deals that you send out, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've got actually on our website, any deal we have available in any state that we do, you can see it that at any point in time. Um, and that's JoyceReadCapital.com. Um, and for anybody that is a buyer looking for inventory, that's going to be JoyceReadCapital.com forward slash buy. Um, so we have two versions of the website. One is more geared towards sellers. And then the JoyceReadCapital.com forward slash buy is for the buyers. So you can see all of our inventory on there. Um, if you have any deals that you like, and even just an opinion on, um, by all means, please shoot me an email. It's brian at joycereadcapital.com. Um, and of course, if, you, if you'd like to co-wholesale anything as well, um, we'd love to take a look at it and, and definitely get it, get it moved for you. Um, and you have a great live Google Doc that once you get on it. Yep. Uh, and so yeah, to kind of comment on that, you can see everything on our website. Um, that's a little less real time on the website. But what Dan's talking about is we actually have a Google sheet that we share with our investors and that way you can see literally as we're adding a property onto the line you can see that property as it's coming on um so talk about you know talk about having you know exclusive access to our inventory that's the way to get it if you'd like access to that shoot me an email as well and we can get you on there it's a great guideline to look at because if i remember it shows deals that have closed and sold so if you're looking at deals in that market and making offers you can kind of see what what Joyce Reed can move them for and, and exactly sure that you're kind of safe there. Two things on that. It could, it could tell you what you can move it for. It can also tell you what you should pay for something in the, in the same area, right? If you, if you're working on a deal, we just lock one up in Barefoot Bay. If, if you have a similar property in Barefoot Bay, you know what price you should probably be at if you just take a look at our spreadsheet. So there's two, there's two benefits out of that too. Man, that's awesome. So um, we got to do this again. I'd love to, um, uh, set up something. I know that you're looking to align with a lot of the different people in the market that do what you do. And um, I'd love to be able to create something on here where we can come up, come on every week and, and just showcase deals like, hey, uh, let's get on. And um, here's what we have a house in St. Augustine. And it's this, that and the ad, it's blah, 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 whatever. And we can run like our own little, our own little auction through here. That would be pretty cool. Sounds great to me. Sounds great to me for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on, man. I, it's good to see you. Good to talk to you. I'm glad that it seems like business as usual in the market for, for the investor side. Oh, one quick thing, and I don't know if we discuss this or not. What are you seeing from the capital partners, the private money, the hard money? Good, good question. Good question. I always forgot to touch on that. So when it, when it, so the, the, basically the qualifications have just gotten much, much more difficult. Um, is what we're seeing. So we had actually a deal go south, supposed to close a couple Fridays ago. The guy was borrowing from Lending Home um, out, of, out of San Francisco, and he was supposed to put 10% down and their fees, you know, origination was 2%, whatnot. So all the Corona stuff happens and they call him up and they say, hey, you actually need 40% down. And oh, our- Just a little, just a little shift. Just a, just a little bit more. <laughs> 
And so, you know, we, we need you to put not only 40% down, but we're doubling our origination fee as well. So not 2%, now you're gonna pay us 4%. Um, so needless to say, he walked away from the deal, it was not anything he signed up for. Um, but again, even in all this wildness of Corona, we found a buyer within 48 hours to close that cash within seven days of that falling apart. Um, so they are out there. You just have to find the right people. I, if I would be heavily- You'd say buyer, you found a buyer to take the deal he was on, or you found a, a buyer to fund his deal for him? We found another buyer, a brand new buyer to take the deal and close in seven days. Um, so, you know, it, it was a different buyer, obviously, um, but they had cash, no hard money. Um, so right now we are, we're, we're kind of, I don't want to say balking, but we're definitely looking much, much closer at hard money deals or hard money offers as they come in now. Um, just because we know the flow of money on the big level is, is definitely slowed down almost to a halt. Um, especially for investment purposes. So any big multifamily deals, development deals, at this point in time, it's, there's, there's not really a quick solution that I've seen yet to get around some of the funding stuff that has to go into a bigger project. But there's plenty of people out there that have enough cash lying around to buy a $100,000 rental or a you know, $120,000 rental. Um, so in that regard, the buyers are there. Um, you just have to dig a little deeper and find the right person. Um, and one more kind of note here, we did, we did a survey with our buyers. We've got a 3,000 person buyers list. And the first thing we did when all this started to go down, well, really when, the, when this deal fell out, we're like, you know what, let's just ask our buyers. Let's get a, let's get a pulse for it. So we sent a survey. Um, we actually got a ridiculous response rate. About 40% of our list responded. Um, and from that, we took a sample. And so essentially about two thirds of buyers are still buying. They're just a little, they're just a little tighter. They want to be a little safer. They want to make sure they're buying a little bit deeper. They want to make sure the rehab's not going to take forever. And of course, the tenant thing has to be checked off as well. Um, and then the other one third of the buyer said they're waiting until all this is gone. So that is a material effect on the buyers we're working with, but it also is a proven point that the buyers are still there. We just have to find the right ones. Nice. Well, man, that's awesome. Hey, let's do this again. Uh, we can do it weekly. We can do it whenever you want. Um, let me know, man. Just shoot me a text. I've got a little calendar that we can sign up for. And, All right, man. Uh, uh, this is, this is fun, man. This is fun. I love talking investment and real estate. And um, I look forward to you moving the deal that I sent over to you. So I appreciate got the it. help on that one. And uh, I'll try and get some more over to you. All right, Dan. Yeah, I really appreciate being on today. would love to do it again. And uh, we'll have to get you on ours here soon. Yeah, that's right. So you have a podcast starting, right? So keep an we eye do. out for Brian's podcast. Yep, it is. Uh, we just got started, so we're kind of uh, working the production up and getting it, uh, getting it to the best level it can be. It's called Off Market, um, and you can find it on Spotify. Awesome, cool, and please make sure you jump on, put all your information into the feed, and uh, and share this. And this way, people can get in touch with you, sign up for your list, and uh, we'll do it again. All right, thanks, Dan. See you, buddy. Thanks. Have a great day. You too.